The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is rated E for Everyone by the ESRB. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ocarina of Time Master Quest. In the last episode we took down King Dodongo in Dodongo's Cavern and now from the suggestion of Darunia we are making our way up to the top of Death Mountain to find the Great Fairy. It's recommended to do this because the Great Fairy does provide you with something that's pretty useful. Not even in the current uh, stage of the game, but in the late stage of the game as well. Oh, held that too long. Sorry, I'm, like always, I'm trying to concentrate and focus on what's happening. By the time I get this to make it over, I'm gonna be out of bombs. Really. Now. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to make our way, as I was saying, up to the top of the mountain. We do have a little area here which is erupting and if I remember correctly this area has tracking boulders which is why you have your Hylian shield uh, but later on you don't have to worry about that I'm gonna showcase the spider trick here hopefully If you hold still while a Skulltula looks at you and turns purple, you can avoid getting hit by stopping. We're going to drop a bomb here and go into the Great Fairy Fountain. First, I do need this because inside the Fairy Fountain, you do require the... Uh, uh, the proof of the royal family in order to get great fairy items and I really like this great fairy item because like I said this really gets the ball rolling on some future abilities that we can get to Welcome, um, you. I am the Great Fairy of Power. I'm going to grant you a sword technique. Receive it now. <laughs> and we got... Uh, the mastery of the secret sword technique, the spin attack. If you hold B to charge the weapon, release it to unleash a wave of energy. If you want to release energy without charging, just rotate the circle once and press B. When you charge power for a spin attack, magic power will be consumed. Pay attention to your green magic meter. Hey boy! You're a messenger of the royal family, aren't you? Next time you're in their neighborhood, you should drop in on a friend of mine who lives by Hyrule Castle. She'll surely grant you another new power. When battle has made you weary, please come back to see me. So now in the upper left corner of the screen, we have a magic meter. And, if we do a small spin attack, which does not take magic, we have this blue aura around our sword. And you can charge it up to do a blue aura, or a red aura. Now we're going to make quick work of what we have to do in here, which is Death Mountain Crater. And we're going to try to do this very quickly because it is based on how much HP you have. HP. How much hearts you have. 
You destroyed a gold skulltula. I believe what I'm after is just down here. Go towards this wall, and it's a climbing wall. I kind of went a bit too far, but at the bottom here is the piece of heart, and now we have three pieces. So now I need to quickly get back up this wall and out. If I don't make it, then it is an instant death, and I don't really want to have an instant death at this stage. I think I can make it. Yeah, I made it. It is a close call with this little of health, but if you get more uh, hearts, you can last longer. And then we're going to talk with the large owl. There we go. So, I didn't mean to skip that. Basically, what he means, what he says is grab onto his talons just by standing underneath him, and he'll fly us back to Kakariko. We do get this lovely scenic flight of... Death Mountain though, so there's some pretty scenery to go around. It's not the best graphic wise, but it could be worse. And we end up on top of this building, um, which is Impa's house. And we want to carefully drop down the back because in here, which is a place that I tried to fly to earlier by the way, uh, you get a piece of heart, and this gets us another heart container. Now, I'm just going to quickly think about what I can do at this stage. I think I need to find out what time it is uh, in-game. But, really? Only four gold skeletons? I thought I had a lot more. Hmm. Ah. Uh, let's go find the clockworks. Actually, there is... I believe there is a hole here. You're not supposed to be able to find this hole until later, but if you find it now, you have these two undeads. I don't know. No, that's not effective. Okay. I was just going to walk up to them, but I'd rather not risk it, so we're just going to play this. Pull out the sword. Chop it, and we get our first magic jar, which is used to fill up our magic meter. And if we defeat both of the redeads, we get this treasure box appearing. And inside of it is... Not what I was expecting. I thought this hole had a heart piece in it. Anyways, um, if I had a larger wallet that would fill it up, to get the larger wallet you need to defeat 10 gold skeletalas, which I did not do yet. I, for some reason, only have four. Anyways, uh, we're going to make our way back down. Uh -huh. What do I want to do now? If we head back to Hyrule Castle Town, we can work on the mask minigame. Or the mask side quest. And we can work on the bomb minigame to get a bigger bomb bag. And now that I think about it, I should have gone back to Goron City while I was on Death Mountain. That's fine, I can make my way back up there in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to travel all the way to this building here and go inside and talk to her. Huh? huh? What? Uh oh! A customer! Welcome to our cutting edge amusement center, the Bomb Chew Bowling Alley. Do you want to know what you can win? Well, it's a C. 
secret. I can't tell you until you've paid to play. It's 30 rupees per game. Do you want to play? Yes. Okay. Aim for the hole in the center and let Bomb Chu go and get 10 tries. Ready? Let's bowl. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's what you can win. Start. Okay, so I do want this victory. So I'm going to try to get this in. This can be either really, really easy or really, really difficult. I believe I want to stand at the blue arrow with a slight angle. Let's try here. Oh, here. Uh, further back. There we go. Like I said, this will either be really, really easy or really, really difficult. Uh, the difficult part is this one with the giant chicken in the back. I just go. No. Now. If you're lucky, the giant chicken will move out of the way. If not, then you just have to find a different way around. I think this will go in. No. Okay. This is the last round. And... Ah. Uh, so close. We are going to play again, and we're going to fast forward till we get a victory. This one's just for more bombs, so... Uh, if I get a victory, I get a victory. If I don't, then I don't. I don't really want this item, but... You never know. Anyways, uh, fast forward. Didn't make this round. Let's try another. Bigger bomb bag. This is something that I have to win. If it wasn't obvious, Bomb Chu Bowling is probably the worst minigame ever. Like, if you tell someone that you enjoy the Bomb Chu Bowling minigame, they're not going to believe you. Because I'm not going to believe you. Uh, let's try here. In? Okay. We are entering the final round with six bomb chews. Let's try this angle. And did I get it on the first try? Let's try this. And we got it on the first try. I just had to drop the bomb a little bit faster. And on this attempt, well, technically this is the third try for victory. But we got a prize of the bim big bomb bag. And now we don't have enough rupees to continue, but I do want to get that heart piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to officially show off that rupee trick that I mentioned on episode 3, I believe, when I first left um, Kokiri Forest. So if we go all the way out and we go onto the chain, we don't even have to go and climb the chain. And we play the sun song. We'll close Hyrule Castle gates. This will climb us up. And I'm just going to be a little bit more careful because I actually can't quite see the details. I'm going to line myself up. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that people will make a jump from the top of the chains and find one red rupee. And when I jumped off the top of the chain, I found two red rupees. 
Well, now I'm going to show you that if you walk across the top, you'll get one, two, three, three red rupees just across the top of Hyrule Castle Town. Now we're going to jump down and fall through the earth, but we're going to convert it. There we go. I did I'm positive I was playing the song correctly. Anyways, um, we're going to turn it back to day. We only have enough for two games at the Bomb Tree Bowling Alley, but, you know, uh, two games is better than none. We're going to go again and try to get more prizes that we don't have. The heart piece is one of them, and there is another item that I want from here, too, which is a Bomb Chew. Because that is an item that I will eventually need to have in my arsenal in this version of Ocarina of Time. We're going to send this off. The first wall is the easiest. I don't know why it keeps putting the second one onto that corner. Um... that one that will make it? No, too high. That one's gonna be way too low. That one's gonna be way too low. Okay, there we go. Now we're just gonna need to get the bomb true to the centerpiece. Which, did I just do it again? Guys, I am terrible at the bomb chew bowling. The fact that I was even able to do it like the th on the third time is astounding. The fact that I was able to do it this time with the minimum money is amazing. And she just wanted to give me bombs, so we're just gonna... We don't require it, so we're just gonna get out of here now. There are three places where the second target can go, on the left, on the right, and on the top. And if you, um, the top one is probably my favorite one because it's liter it is a straight shot. Okay, uh, just evaluating my time. With all the cuts I'll have to make there, I'm pretty sure I have time to show off the Happy Mask Salesman. So if you remember, back when we started going up Death Mountain, there was a knight who mentioned visiting the Happy Mask Salesman. And basically what he referred to was this man right here. And what we want to do is we want to talk to this guy here. And we want to get the Keaton Mask. And this is the key something mask that the guard wanted, and we're borrowing the mask, meaning that we didn't have to pay for it. The mask trading sequence is unique in that it's based on a market system where you buy and sell masks, but you don't pay for the mask until you've given it to someone who wants the mask. It's a bit odd because, I mean, what if you wanted the mask? But it's still, it's good. So what we're going to do is I'm only going to show off the traveling of this first mask. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the footage to me going back and forth between the happy mask shop and the uh, mask location. I believe there's only one mask that I cannot get a, a sell, and that is the last one because the character who wants it is not spawned into the world yet. Even though we are a very open world game right now, it's just something that requires a bit more, um, a bit more. 
So coming all the way back up to the guard, we're going to put on our key, uh, bleh, Keaton mask and speak with him. Wahahaha! Do you think you're in disguise, Mr. Hero? Oh, is that a key something character mask? I heard he's very popular recently. He's my boy's favorite, that key something mask. If you don't mind, will you sell it to me? Yes. My boy will be very happy with this. You really are, Mr. Hero. <laughs> you sold the 10 rupee mask for 15 rupees. You earn a little profit. Let's go to the mask shop and pay back the mask price of 10 rupees. So while the, while the guard gave us 15 rupees, the mask itself is only worth a value of 10 rupees. Meaning that when we go back to the Happy Mask Salesman, we only have to give back 10 rupees. And there is some funny animation to what happens if you don't come back with the correct amount. And I... I got rid of most of my money going through the Bomb Tree Bowling on purpose, so I can show that off. I think it's hilarious because it's in no other animation except for this game and kind of beginning arc of Majora's Mask. Granted, um, what's his name? Happy Mask Salesman is only found in these two games, but I mean. There's opportunities. There are opportunities for more. Anyways, if we come into the house or building and talk to him. Oh, great. You sold it. Please pay back 10 rupees for the Keaton mask now. Payment received. And we get the horned skull mask. And the reason why I want this mask is not just because I'm going to sell it to a character, but because there's a new upgrade that we can get uh, by wearing it. I'm going to cut to the area that I need to get to in order to get that upgrade, so I'll be right back. And we're back in the Lost Woods of all places. So the first thing that I want to do is go back to that weird meadow thing that I found in the forest meadow. That area where if you turn a, make a left here at the water and make another left, it was that strange field. At the back of this strange field, there is a there are some butterflies, and they indicate that there is a hole right in the back here. And this is the Deku stage. Now, if we put on the mask and approach the stage, we get this. Now, what's super, super cool about this is you can come here wearing any mask and they will respond in different ways. There are only two masks that give you some really bonus items and this is one of them. All of the young Deku Scrub Brothers agree. You look exactly like our sacred forest totem. As an offering from us, uh, please accept these Deku Sticks. We will also enhance your carrying skills. Abracadabra! Alakazam! And we got uh, the ability to carry more Deku Sticks. What's super cool about this is that I never actually knew about these Deku scrubs for years since the release of Ocarina of Time. I thought that the Deku uh, from Majora's Mask game were original models exclusive for the game. But the fact is that they aren't just a unique model from Majora's Mask, but they're a unique model in this game in that there is only one area where you find friendly Deku scrubs. Now we're going to run all the way back to visit the second Skull Kid that we encountered, the one who wanted to play Saria's song. And if we put on the Skull Mask and go visit him... Hee <laughs> hee, 
under that mask. Aren't you that Kokiri kid? Quite an unusual mask you have there, hee <laughs> hee. I like it. It may make me look a little bit tougher. Hey, why don't you give it to me? Okay. Yowza! I'm gonna wear this all the time. You just gave a... T he just gave you 10 rupees for this 20 rupee mask. You lost money on that deal. Go back to the ha mask shop and pay 20 rupees for the mask. The difference will have to come out of your own pocket. And if you leave and come back to see that skull kid now, he's wearing the skull mask. Which is something that's super cool because it keeps that continuity of that character going even beyond this point of the game. Now we're going to cut back to... Hmm... I'm just thinking real quick. I don't really like the outcome that we have. I'll see if I can spend five ru uh, the four rupees so that I can show off Happy Mask Salesman's uh, reaction to being underpaid. Uh, so I will jump cut to the Happy Mask Salesman. Uh, hopefully with the fun animation and if not then with the correct animation okay guys we're back and i was able to decrease uh my rupee count oh great you sold it please pay me back the 20 rupees for the skull mask now uh what you don't have my money how dare you you better bring me my money or else and he just basically kicked you out of his shop. What's really funny about that animation is the eyes. They get it so creepy looking. So I'm not going to do the last mask at this moment. Even, or not the last mask. The second mask at this moment. Because there's just a... It's not really worth it at this time. Um... To do it if you're low on money I would recommend it because it's I believe you get 30 rupees even which means you don't make a profit but you don't lose a profit either uh, just remember that you'd have to come back to the happy mask salesman with uh, 30 rupees for that next next mask payment received Though I will get it into my arsenal. The spooky mask. It is a sad wooden mask. This is what's found on the Redead, which is an interesting mask. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. We got our magic meter. We got a bomb upgrade. We got another heart piece. And we did two of the four trading mask side quests. That's it for this episode. Uh, if you liked what you saw, mash that like button, uh, wrong order. Leave a comment in the comment section below, mash that like button, and subscribe if you have not for more Master Quest content. I will see you guys in the next episode, where we finish the mask, uh, the wooden mask, where we finish the mask side quest, and go around looking for more heart pieces. And I'll see you guys then. Bye.